In this video, we're going to take a look at something called Direct Deploy. Direct Deploy allows you to use Desktop Server to take your complete local development environment and publish it to a live server using a live domain name. There are a few steps to get it set up, but once it's set up, it's very quick to use. So let's take a look. First, here is my local development site. It's wp41.dev, and you can see everything's updated. Then, over here, I have dev.codeventure.net, which is a site that I put up a while ago. It's default WordPress. It has some posts. Nothing really significant about it. But you can see here that it's a bit out of date. It has five updates, one of which is WordPress itself. Now, direct deploy completely replaces what's on the live server. This is different from simply writing a post on your local environment and pushing that one post up to live. This is taking your complete local environment and replacing everything on the live server. This is important to remember because if there's anything on the live server you want to keep and it's not in local, it's going to be gone forever. Now the first thing we're going to do is install a plugin on both local and live. There you can see there's a plugin called Desktop Server for WordPress. This plugin facilitates the transfer of information from your local environment to your live environment. So now I'm installing it on my live server and activating it. Now I'm going to go to my local server and install it here also. Now it's on both. So now I'm going to go back to the desktop server app here. I'm going to choose export, import, or share hit next. By default it's chosen export or deploy a WordPress website. We're going to deploy from wp41.dev to dev.codeventure.net and I'm going to choose direct deploy. Now what it's asking for here is my live server WordPress admin credentials. So as if you were to just log into the WordPress admin area on the live server. There we are. We hit next. And now we can choose to encourage search engine visibility. I don't want that. For all that this is a live server, I don't actually want Google to know about it. Purge post and page revisions. That can save quite a bit in database space, and you don't really need them. You can customize the scrubbing options, which we don't really want to do. It allows you to get a little more fancy in your search and replace. And then we have the option to deploy database only. We want to deploy everything. So now I'm going to hit Next. And what it's doing right now in the scrub is searching for the old domain, wp41.dev, and replacing it with a new domain, dev.codeventure.net. And actually, that took a very short period of time, and now it's transferring everything to the server. There. Now our deploy is finished. We click Next, and we can go view that site. Note again here, it says you may need to update your permalinks. We'll see. So local was called Topher Supersite. Live used to be Topher's Test. Let's reload and see how it changed. And now it's Topher Supersite. We have completely replaced the old site with our development site. I'll bet it'll make us log in again. Yes, because our cookies are gone now. Now, in another video, 
near the beginning, I told you I didn't care about my password because it was local only. It's not local anymore. I pushed this to live. All my users from my old site are gone now too. And the only user is my new one with my silly little password. So I need to be sure to go reset that. There we are. Just to be safe, I'm going to go to Settings, Permalinks, and simply Save Changes. There, now our permalink structure is updated. And that's all there is to it. And now that I have the plugins installed on both sites already, all I would have to do to do another deploy is just go through this process again in the desktop server app. Practically speaking, you probably don't want to do that all that often. Once you publish a site from desktop server to live, you're probably going to start making content changes on live that you may not necessarily make on your development server. And so pushing again would wipe out all those content changes. This is really only useful when building a complete new site locally and then publishing it for the first time to the web.